Hello and welcome to series two of my podcast, Innovation, where we get to hear from incredible women in science and technology who are from a diverse range of backgrounds, experiences, and basically all walks of life. My aim with the conversations that you'll hear on this show is to bring out the humanness of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and maths. I grew up in a very STEMI environment where my dad, who's an engineer, always encouraged me and my two sisters to ask questions and be curious about the world around us. Let's face it, our planet is such a fascinating and incredible place, and I certainly wanted to understand how it all works. As a result, I qualified as a fluid dynamicist, having done an undergraduate in mechanical engineering, which basically taught me to look at the world in a very logical and rational way. By the end of my studies, I was able to mathematically model how turbulence works and other chaotic situations on this planet. And looking back, I think I started to believe that most things in life could be explained using equations. It was only after I graduated from university that life itself taught me that not everything is logical or predictable. Life is actually messy, chaotic and non-linear. So here on Innovation, I want to hear how other women in STEM deal with that. I want to learn how they stay emotionally balanced and emotionally fit. This week, I talked to Mariam Adeleke, a structural engineer, who really opens up about her career journey. My name is Mariam Adeleke. I'm a structural engineer. I've been working for Arup for the past six years now. I joined Arup as a graduate. Um, so most of the work that I've been doing is buildings projects. I'm in the buildings engineering team. So designing structures. Um, I've been involved in the various projects from rail projects to commercial and residential buildings. Um, Yeah, and I often work as part of a multidisciplinary team, so working with other types of engineers. How is what you do um, affecting the rest of us? If you go outside and you look around, literally everything you see, almost, I would say, 99% of it involved an engineer in one way or the other. Um, The houses that we live in were designed by structural engineers, so without without structure and a structural engineer we won't be able to trust the buildings that we enter that they're safe that they're fit for purpose so it's cr- incredibly important to to society it does seem to be a stereotypical kind of male profession what sparked your interest to go into something like this yeah you're you are right actually and it, it is quite sad that to this day um it's still quite rare um to to see a female engineer um there were no engineers in my family um so it's not like I was influenced by a relative or anything I didn't even know um that such a career path existed it's actually a funny story so I've always been into art um and always been into into maths as well so maths was one of my favorite subjects um and I was I remember just like yesterday I was in my um, year 10 maths class and I often finished my work fairly quickly and was just like I don't know hanging around so I decided to get out my art book and start drawing Um, and then my maths teacher saw me and was just like what are you doing put that away also you should look into architecture and I was like what is architecture (laughs) I had no idea So what's it been like being a woman of ethnic minority in the built environment? My experience has been quite difficult um, just because I had to get used to being the only one of of me in the room. Um, And I found that quite uncomfortable starting as a grad, actually. Um, And it made me it made me insecure at the start. Um, and it made me feel out of place Um, and because I felt out of place I started to doubt myself second guess whether you know I was meant to be there unfortunately Um, but I think now I see it with pride Um, I I have a lot of pride being uh, you know a, a black female engineer when I speak to people, when I meet people, when I tell them what, what I do, they're always so encouraged. 
they're always so surprised. I, I mean, I hope in the future it'll be less surprising. Um, but, you know, I'm always met with so much encouragement and they're always like, oh, I need you to talk to my my daughter. Or I need you to talk to my my cousin or something. Um, so I do see it with a lot of pride and and um, and I, I've learned to outgrow that that um, insecurity and and that doubt. I'm still learning at times, um, but it, it has been challenging, um, but it's made me who I am today. I really relate to that challenge. Um, it's what made me move away from engineering and go into something more creative because the self-doubt um, and the kind of insecurity just got too much. And it's like a, another thing to add to your plate. You know, it's not like those jobs are easy. I mean, they're already very intellectually challenging. And so to then have the kind of emotional challenge of knowing how to hold yourself up in those environments um, can just be one additional task that's just too much. I completely agree. Yeah, but you stuck with it. Yeah, um, I think I'm quite stubborn in, in nature. I, want, I really want to prove myself. Um, sometimes I, I question, who am I proving myself to, others or myself? And I do think I've tried to prove to myself, um, you know, that I can do it. Um, and when I strip back all that, you know, the hardship that's associated to being, you know, an ethnic minority in, in, in the job, and I actually just do the job and I have, when I have those opportunities to do the job and not actually think about that extra stuff, I realise I do really like this, you know, and I wish that that extra burden wasn't there because then who knows how much more I'd be able to flourish if it wasn't there. Looking back on your career, would you have made any other decisions? If I wasn't fortunate to have the experiences that I've had, I probably would have just gone with I don't know, suggestion that my parents said, oh, you know, do medicine or do law, <laughs> you know, I was quite, when I was younger in primary school, I was really chatty and my mum was just like, you should be a lawyer because you're so chatty. I don't know why. <laughs> so I literally held on to that and I was like, okay, I've got to be a lawyer. And then as things went on, she was just like, I'll oh, be a doctor because every Nigerian parent wants their children to be doctors um but fortunately um my parents were supportive in you know me realizing something that I was interested in and going for it even though it was quite different to yeah. them and to me as well yeah it is such an unusual choice um but you really are a trailblazer like a pioneer to be doing something and you have this way about you that is so confident in the choice you've made. I find that so refreshing. Where does that come from? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I, I probably would say maybe my mum. My mum, she's really, she's really a res resilient and tough character. Um, so I think there's probably things that I've learned from her, um, like subconsciously, just growing up and seeing her saying, I want to do this and just go for it and do it. What's been driving you to stick with this? I've always strived for excellence um, in everything that I've done. I want to do it well. Um, I want to see it to its completion and do it well. It's been a journey. And I think when I when I reflect on where, where I've come from, I've seen how it's improved me as a person, as a professional. Um, and it's been it's been an upward trajectory. And I know that, you know, there's there's more I want to achieve. I want to um to, to, to be chartered in different institutions you know I want to reach a, a point where I've just like yeah I've I've achieved um the quality I've I, I desired as a kid um I want to get to that point where I can be a role model to others who are on the same path as me um because it's been a struggle for me personally um so I just want to know that I overcome that. And that's, that's my, that's my drive. That's so awesome. I wonder, like, you could have achieved the same excellence doing engineering or law, uh, sorry, medicine or law. Um, why, why this? Because there's something about a building that speaks to me more than 
I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I don't know a surgery would because I, I'm just it's just not it doesn't speak to me the same way when I when I travel when I'm walking around London buildings they 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 create a mood in me um they can they 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 uplift me when I walk around and I say wow this is an amazing building it's amazing structure um it really evokes a kind of mood in me that um that I've always had since since a kid so being able to contribute to that um and probably give someone else that feeling um I think that's amazing that's so awesome um what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given either from someone professional or friend family personally for me I don't know if this is the best ever piece of advice but this is what's coming up to my head now <laughs> because I've, I've I've received so many um pieces of advice um but there's one that that sticks to me um I met up with um with a couple of um, women from Arup when I first joined um, the London office and I was a bit overwhelmed um, from the change because I was working previously in the Solihull office and coming back to the big city was just you know I, I had a lot of people in my ears saying there's a lot of competition in London and you've really got to put yourself out there and I felt a lot of pressure um, joining um, the London office but um, one of the one of the women in the office she brought me along to a dinner with other women um women in the office um who were um of higher um grades more senior and we we're just discussing you know the struggles of being a woman in a very male dominated uh profession and i must I'm, i must have just said oh um i just i just fear being uh, mediocre and she said, well, there's nothing wrong with being mediocre. There are a lot of men in this industry and a lot of them are mediocre. So don't fear being a mediocre woman. And I think, I think, I think that was important to me because I think in, we live in a society now anyway with, with media, social media and everything that everyone's trying to be, have their name in the lights. Everyone is, is tr tr aiming for excellence. And, and I, think, I think I commend that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I think it can get unhealthy when you put too much pressure on yourself and you don't allow yourself just to be. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that was the first time when I realised, yeah, OK, don't 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 just throw away be, uh, striving for excellence but if you are for example normal an average person now don't don't kill yourself over that just be first allow yourself to be first and then we can see what what are we aiming for next and it really that was a time where I, was, I allowed myself to breathe and not not fight so much Mm, yeah I really understand that um how do you keep yourself mentally strong and fit so having a work-life balance is, is is so important to me um and doing things that I enjoy um so making sure to take a break from work mm. um I would say is there anything that's like your go-to thing? Like some people do a spin class, some people knit jumpers. Like, is there something that you just is really like a an absolute guaranteed kind of this will relax you type of thing? Yeah, yeah. I'm a definitely a gym rat. So <laughs> I, I go to the gym like four times a week, sometimes five. Um, I, I do love weightlifting. <laughs> And it, it really does de-stress me when it when things get a bit too stressful. What's been the most humbling experience you've ever had in life? I'm not really sure if most people would understand this because it is quite um, quite particular to people like me who've grown up in a, in an area like me. So um, I've I've been I was born and raised in a in a council estate, um, lived there up all the way up to uni and I think the people that I um the people that I grew up with uh, and even went to school with I I and even studied in uni with there's a lot of people I met a lot of people who 
came from that same background um and um to us going to for example a Russell Group University we made it out of the ends that's what we'd say um so you know it, it's a thing where you know we made it out we study we get that high flying job and we move out somewhere fancy that's that's literally what it is i actually moved back i moved back to 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 my council estate and um i think that was a humbling experience to me because because i think growing up i always desired the whole kind of let the whole kind of oh escape from from this escape from that but you returned i returned and i love it i love it um I, and i didn't love it at first i kind of thought like why am i back here again why am i seeing all the same old faces um even though it's changed massively because of gentrification um I think I learned to love my roots and even just, you know, the people that I work with, you know, I work in a very kind of middle class environment. Um, they don't understand the kind of background that I came from, but being able to say, you know what, this is, this is where I live. This is where I've always lived. Um, to me, that's, that's been humbling because, because it's, it was something that I was kind of sh wanted to shy away from initially but now embracing it and, so, and, you know, even highlighting that, you know, the issues that someone like me growing up in this environment faces um, and how, how engineers play a role in how these areas change. Um, it's been quite important for me to embrace um, and to share. Um, yeah because a lot of people that grew up in my area, they don't, you know, have the opportunities that I've fortunately had. Um, so, yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so, that is so humbling. I feel humbled by your process of kind of self-acceptance. And I love this word, um, kind of embracing where you're from, because I think um, often when we are uncomfortable being in a minority is because we do struggle to accept that we are different. Um, and it's so empowering to say, actually, you know what, I'm from here and I um, have a certain life experience up till now and I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't get more empowering than that. Yeah. And we're always trying to find that power from outside, you know, what people think of us. Maybe we can change other people's opinions of us. And we don't realise that actually the one thing that we need to change is our own opinion of ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. It sounds like you found that and it's, it's so beautiful. OK, so on that note, then, what is your superpower? Would you say? I would say that um, my superpower is more of a softer skill. Um I, th I feel like I'm quite empathetic um, and I, I can read people very well um, and which helps a lot when it comes to um, tense conversations or, for example, um, if, <laughs> if things get too heated. Sometimes, um, sometimes I've been in situations at work where you know, you've got you've got two very um, kind of hot headed alpha male figures who are butting heads and just, you know, having someone like me to kind of. Um, what's it to dilute the situation? Yeah, or appease. Appease. Um, yeah, um, I, I find I think people find it easy to 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 um, communicate with me. Um, um, so I'd say that I'd say that that was my my um, my superpower connecting with people um, a bit more in touch emotionally. I think that's needed in in this industry, actually. I mean, so badly. It's so interesting that you call it a soft skill, and many people do regard communication and being the peacemaker in in teams as a soft skill. But my gosh it's so fundamental mm -hmm. for creating those diverse teams, like gelling everyone together. Um, what 
have been your perspectives on ED&I and, and, you know, from your own point of view, but also what you've witnessed in engineering? When I first joined um, Arup or when I first entered the profession, um, I think maybe conversation had just about, about started about EDI, um, ED&I, and I. And um, at first I kind of felt like it was it was kind of trying to meet a quota sort of thing, which didn't make me feel comfortable because, you know, everybody wants to, 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 to get recognised because of their contribution, not because of what they look like or who they are we don't just want to be a box ticking exercise it's not it doesn't do much for your self esteem um but then obviously um last year happened everybody was talking massively about black lives matter um and there was a big shift in how um organizations were viewing their performance when it comes to edi um and everybody was scrambling for, I don't know, for statements to make about, about their organization and what, they've, what they believe about diversity and equality. And I don't know, I felt like it didn't feel very genuine. Um, but I think as time went on, we had more conversations within my company anymore. We had more conversations. Teams were meeting up um, to talk about EDI. Um, and we were coming up with, you know, action plans. And actually, I, for the first time, I, I, I saw, you know, okay, we want to do something to make this more, you know, um, more um, inclusive. And I say inclusive because um, you can always add more diversity to your um, to your company, but do do they feel like they belong there? And that was that was my issue anyway. When I when I entered the workplace, I didn't feel like I belonged. I just felt like I was just there. Um, so I feel like um, then we started to try and um, there was more conversation about how do we make how do we make it more equal and diverse, and then how do we make those of um, minority groups feel more included. Um, so these, these conversations are happening. I actually just left one early, um, just today, actually. We had um, an inclusion pledge workshop in my team. So I feel like things are getting a lot better. Um, I think even for me on a personal level, because these conversations are happening, it's given me more confidence to be more outspoken as well. Um, within my company, they've also started a, a BAME leadership um, uh, panel so um, we can actually see um, people at a leadership level um, who reflect um, diversity, which which is the first I've ever seen of the sort. Um, so what what am I what am I trying to say? I think I think things are moving. Um, things are moving to. Um, I guess it, things are progressing. I just hope that. Um, it doesn't kind of taper off as time goes by. Um, and I yeah. think that um, that everyone, including um, us of um, ethnic minority, should make sure that, you know, the conversations keep happening um, and supporting others, um, especially younger people who are joining um, the profession to, to not feel the struggles that we felt because there's meant to be progress. What about role models and mentors? Like how important have they been for your career growth? Super important. Um, super important. I think, you know, ideally you I I I would love to have a role model who had exactly the same experiences of, as me and then overcame and you know, but I think I've realized I've learned to to kind of understand that um on a human level we can have we can have similar struggles even though they're not even though they're not identical um so I can learn from other people who might not have had identical issues and um, struggles as me but yeah I th I'd say my role models today they're not they're not necessarily like me um but they support me and they're for me um and they they I, they understand my struggles as much as they can 
Um, so I have to be, um, I've learned to be, um, to be brave enough to express my struggles to those who might not understand them at first, but are willing to try. What's brought the change about, do you think? I think a lot of people are starting to acknowledge their privilege. I've, some people who, you know, have really gone out there and, and listened to, to, to what we're saying about the need for inclusion, the need for diversity, the, the lack of inequality that currently exists, people are starting to realise, well, I actually have a privilege and I need to use this to, to help those who aren't as privileged as I am. I'm seeing that and, and, and it's really, you know, it's, it, it's, I, I'm pretty sure that it must be hard to acknowledge that. Um, it must be hard, but, but, you know, people are starting to see that and, I, and it's good. I'm glad. Yeah, I mean, I must say in all the work that I've done in sort of like encouraging women into engineering and that side of things, I've always been struck by the fact that we don't need to encourage women into STEM. We need to actually change the mindsets of people in STEM that are not making it a welcome place for us, you know, and the fact that you are um, highlighting that uh the privileged are recognizing that they're privileged is so i mean i'm overjoyed by this because yeah. that's the change that has been lacking yeah yeah i agree i agree and i hope i hope you know people it continues because for me it's been wonderful just you know somebody actually going out there and saying you know let me help you let me take time out to to help you and give you some knowledge that I have that you might not have and I'm sure you're going to do that for others one day if you're not doing it already absolutely absolutely I was just even saying that the other day like you know hopefully I pass that you know I can't wait to help <laughs> I can't wait to help other people who are going through this because it's not easy <laughs> so we need all the help that we can get well, you know, you've helped me so much today just by sharing your story and being so honest and transparent about your experiences. And I find you utterly inspiring. And I, I'm i going to be watching you as you progress through your career because, I mean, you're just totally inspirational. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening this week. Please do subscribe to this podcast and maybe even rate and review it if you can. The more ratings and reviews means the more interest from those trusty algorithms, which could help to increase the reach of this show. And you can catch more of this conversation on YouTube, where I post the full length video interview on my new series called Esteemed Women. It's all about self-discovery and evolution on innovation. So as always, be kind and loving to yourselves and I wish you all a great week.